This is the WZ113, the Chinese tier 10 heavy tank, and it's a tech tree tank. This is the first of my tank showcases. And I'm trying to look at, is this tank worth grinding? Well, without further ado, let's get into it. Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we're going to be having a showcase on this beastie, the WZ113, the Chinese tier 10 heavy tank. But before we do, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and you can also like, comment and even share the video. That's what the beastie looks like and we're going to get into more detailed stats. Getting to the 113 starts here, branching off at the Type 58 and going down the IS-2 line. I'm not going to lie to you guys, the IS-2 at tier 7 is a notoriously difficult tank and a pain in the backside. It has horrid gun and loot, but it does improve for the tier 8 and the tier 9 tanks. Looking at its more detailed stats, you can see here that the damage, don't forget this is not a super heavy, it's just a heavy, so the damage is around average. You're not dishing out VK-72 or E-100 damage, but you are dishing out normal damage for a non-super heavy. Rate of fire, seven and a half rounds a minute. That ain't too bad. Penetration, pretty good, 260. Armor, 190.3, but we'll get to that more later. Speed, it's pretty quick. Rotation, however, isn't that great. In fact, the turret reverse on this thing is notoriously difficult. Turning that to its more detailed stats, hit points 2,438, which isn't too bad. The armor we'll get to in a moment. View range for a heavy is pretty good, 282 meters. Camo and concealment is not great. I mean, it is a heavy after all. DPM, 3,199 with a reload time of 7.88 seconds. Penetration isn't too bad. It's pretty good actually for a heavy tank. And your average damage again isn't too bad for a heavy. Don't forget, it's not a super heavy. Depression, however, at six degrees, pretty bad, pretty pants. But it's got good speed going forward. However, it does have a very long turret turn. So what equipment do I have loaded and other things? Well, consumables, this is my loadout for tournaments at the moment. I have the multi-purpose restoration kit, the adrenaline, and I also have that engine boost. If I'm, if I'm in random, I normally swap the engine boost for track repair. When it comes to the provisions, I want the crew at their best. So I normally load the enhanced provisions, and the standard provisions along with the protective kit. Sometimes I will switch the standard provisions to improved um, fuel, but that depends. When it comes to ammunition, that's my loadout, 17, 10, and seven. As for equipment, well, I don't bother with the calibrated shells. I normally stick in the gun rammer. Why? Because the penetration on the tank is good enough. And the calibrated shells aren't really giving you that much more, as you can see. I then have the defense system, because why wouldn't you? I don't bother with the camo net, it's a heavy, use the improved optics. I have the enhanced gun laying device rather than the supercharge. Why? Because why would you need the supercharge? I then get those extra hit points with improved assembly, stick the engine accelerator on because I want to be able to turn that hull a lot quicker, and I use the vertical stabilizer. Turning now to the armor, as you can see, it's pretty rock solid on the turret. Not so rock solid at the front and on the sides, but it does have a few tricks up its sleeve, funnily enough, with that sloped armor. When we have a look at it against, let's say, an IS-4 here with its heat, at the moment with its heat, but I'm going to switch it to its AP, you can see if you can get that bottom plate down, it does only have six degrees, then it's a pretty chunky tank. It is a pretty nice side scraper too, Oddly enough, I mean, you can side scrape in this quite nicely. It's a shame it's not got better gun depression, but it has just about enough for you to clear and protect that bottom plate. Thing about it is, as you can see on the sides and on the back, it is pretty wide open. If I then load the heat for the IS-4, well, things change. As you can see then, the front plate is quite open and the cheeks of the turret also kick into play. Comparing it to the other tier 10 heavies, that's the IS-7, IS-4, and 215B, you can see with the standard ammunition, DPM is by far better than all the rest. It does suffer with penetration in alpha damage, however, but it does beat the 215B. Looking at the rate of fire and reload, it beats them all hands down, 
apart from the 215B in which it is equal to. Aim time, only the 215B beats it, same with dispersion. Speed, however, it blows them all away apart from the IS-7, where it's equal to that. Looking at the win rate, 57% is not bad, only the IS-4 is beating it, so it is better than the IS-7 and the 215B. If we now switch the ammo to its premium ammunition, which is heat, you will see something interesting. So, here we go, and it beats them all, DPM. It's beating everybody apart from the IS-4 on its penetration and on the alpha damage, which are only beaten by the IS-7. Rate of fire for both heat and HE remains the same, however, so pretty good. Now that's all ideal, but what's it actually like to play this tank in a game? Well, this is me rolling out on the new map, Yukon, and you know what? This tank actually likes these type of maps. Now, I did a Yukon map guide uh, video only yesterday, and I said I very rarely roll out on the south spawn, and guess what? I'm rolling out on the south spawn, and I'm going to those positions that I mentioned in that video. I like this tank. Now, I, I admit, I mean, when I first started rolling out in this tank, I, 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 I didn't like it. I really struggled in this tank, didn't enjoy it, didn't really know how to play it. And then I had a chat with Jory of the Clan R2K, and he gave me quite a few tips. And you know what? Since then, this tank has been top of my list of favourites. I mean, I love this tank. It is one of my go-to tanks if I want to go out and have a fun time in Tier 10. Why is that? Well, it's got a lot going for it. And once you get used to this tank, it's got a nice gun, it's got really nice armor, and it's got a good turn of speed. Not only that, it has a low profile. So whilst you've only got six degrees of gun depression, your profile is low enough to actually make that work, funnily enough. Now, okay, here I've been smacked around a bit and I've only done 800 odd damage, but I do think this tank is a beautiful, beautiful tank. I mean, the aim time is nice, the penetration is nice, and as you can see, I mean, we, we're just having a nice time sat here on this corner, giving that T57 a bit of a hard time and bullying the mouse a little bit. We haven't actually done much damage to the mouse, but we bullied him a little bit. I must admit, this isn't the best game I've ever played in this tank. And unfortunately, I've got no masters to show you, despite the fact that I reached out to some more notable players in some more notable clans. But it seems that the only one who had a mastery would Wild One's helper of Metis, and I couldn't use his replay, unfortunately, because it was a year old. Doesn't distract from the fact that this is a beautiful tank. I mean, you can get up close and personal in it because it does have very good frontal armor. And if you do face hook somebody, boy, they are gonna find you tricky to pen unless they back off because they've gotta get that gun down onto that plate. And the sloped armor does carry a few bounces, funnily enough. As I said, I'm not setting the world on fire here. Bounce nothing. I've done just over 2000 damage, but I've done my job as a heavy. And that's the thing, I held the line, I kept the mouse busy, I kept the T-57 busy, I took the shots when I could, and I enjoyed my time playing this tank. And that's what it's all about, guys, at the end of the day. Unfortunately, I don't get the kill here, the Yeagaroo gets him, uh, but we could have got that. I enjoyed this tank. I think this is a really nice tank. Initially, I didn't think it was noob-friendly, but funnily enough, that's grown on me. So here we are now rolling out on mines. And this is a game that I did, what, a couple of days ago. And I'm going to show you now what I mean about it. It just has about enough gun depression. And the gun is fantastic. There's a 121B. Snapshot, 866. I mean, I only did half of that. We double tapped in with my tune mate. And I bounced 350 to boot. That is what I love about this tank. The reload is just fantastic. Its ability to do snapshots like that is really good. Here comes a FV4202, and again, he gets punished for sticking his nose around the corner. And again, I bounce. This is why I like this tank. I mean, okay, six degrees of gun depression isn't a lot. It's just enough to do what you need to do in certain instances, like I'm doing here. 
okay, I'm going to stick my nose out a bit too much pretty soon, and I'm going to get punished for it. But, you know, the thing about this tank is, unless they've got their premium ammo loaded, the chances are they're only going to be seeing your turret, and they're going to be bouncing it. I mean, this is just the turret turn on this tank. I must admit, it, it, it's like, oh, why are you so slow? But if it was faster, believe me, it'd be a pain in the backside. Can't believe I just bounced the bat chat frontally, but if you notice, it, it, I did hit the, the, the sloped armor side, so it's unsurprising. Here comes an E100. Can we track him? Yes, we can. Uh, we didn't do any damage, but we track him nicely. He smacks us, unfortunately, but we can probably track him again, can we? Yeah, we didn't track him, but we got a nice round into that drive sprocket. Because, again, oh, that was Hesh. Because, again, I mean, the penetration on this tank even on its standard ammo, is pretty good. So far, we're just holding the line here. We've bled a little bit. Now we can hit the back chat, put him on fire, get rid of him. We're bleeding a little bit, you can see that, but we're a heavy. We can afford to bleed a little bit. We are tying them up, we're whittling them down. There goes the VK. As you can see, my spotting assistant damage is going up. I've done 1,864 and I bounce 700, and I've taken one kill. Oh, right, I get it, I'm not setting the world on fire. But again, look, that spotting damage is going up and up and up. Maybe now I can poke around the corner and get rid of this FV. Uh, snapshot him in, yes, we can. Okay, we take one from him, we're now on only 400 hit points. We've now done just over 2,000, but we've taken our second kill. There is the FV4005, the Porta Potty. This is what I also love about this tank. Now, the turret on this is rock solid, as you will see. I can sit here up against the carcass of the FV4202 and just bounce everything coming from the Porta Potty. I've now bounced 1600, dished out 3300. Am I going to get one more in? Yes, I am. There we go. 3500, we bounced 1600. The poor Porta Potty didn't have an open hours chance. Wowzers. I love that game and that's why I love that tank. As you can see, we got a first class for our troubles because we did 3,515 damage, killed three tanks and got some quite good credits in premium. Looking how we fared there, well we did top damage, which isn't too bad. And that's the thing, that's why I like this tank, because you do have the ability to do that. And that's been my video on the tank showcase of the WZ113. I have been Fujit, that has been the WZ113, the Chinese Tier 10 Heavy Tank. So, before I go, just like to say, this is a different format of video. I don't know if it's been any good, I don't know if you've liked it, I don't know if you want me to do videos like this going forward, I just thought I'd give it a try. Don't forget, for those of you out there, send your replays to me at fujitsblitz at gmail.com or email them to my Discord, what's ever easier for you. I'd like to do a big thank you to all my subscribers. Without you, these videos would be useless. And a big thank you to my Patreons and YouTube members, who without you, these videos would be a lot harder. Don't forget, you can also become a Patreon or a YouTube member. The details are all on my channel. Until the next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I will say my usual stuff, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.